My Rivian has a problem, and it's partly to do with this funky hole in the roof. The main problem is just basically range, you know, 410 miles for a dual motor backpack is great, um, but I could totally use more. And so while we've done some things already in this video series to improve range, like the lightweight rims, uh, we're also doing things to essentially save what we have, to uh, improve efficiency uh, and also fix self-inflicted efficiency problems. Because basically, when we put on this rooftop tent, we, we cause problems because this little hole, right, it goes ahead and pulls airflow down from the top of the roof. And essentially what it's doing is it wants to break up the vacuum behind the cab of the truck, right? As it's moving along the road, this vacuum behind the square cab sucks the cab, sucks the truck backwards. And so this cool duct here directs the airflow down to break up that vacuum while not increasing the frontal area of the truck at all, which is a, a pretty neat trick. So it shouldn't increase drag too much having that. Although I guess maybe you could also look at it from the perspective of this funky wing here, you could also just not have it and just have the whole roof curve down more gradually. Would that achieve the same effect? It certainly wouldn't look as cool, that's for sure. And so I've already done some testing with and without the rooftop tent. We lost 8% of our range, if you can believe it. Um, so the fix we're gonna try today is really simple. This is gonna be bar none, the cheapest mod in this whole video series. This is a probably overpriced $30 roll of 12 inch black vinyl. And we are simply gonna go ahead and block this up, essentially doing a strip right across here. And um, we will go ahead and see if essentially, instead of directing this airflow smack right down to the rooftop tent, if we just let it cascade smoothly over and onto the tent surface, and then of course onwards out the back, are we gonna get any of that 8% back? Let's go ahead and find out. Just some quick spray detail here basically to clean the surface. Um, make sure we're not grinding any uh, dust and crap in and trapping it underneath our vinyl. And then we're gonna spray down some more as well to uh, go ahead and kind of lubricate the vinyl application. And um, should be easy peasy lemon squeezy. That overpriced roll, by the way, is 20 feet, so you can screw this up a lot of times and still have more to try again. You could, of course, use soap water for that. That would be uh, probably cheaper uh, than the Meguiar's Quick Detail Mist. Um, it's just what I have handy. I like that. that. Getting it down along this crease here. Is that in the frame? Yeah, getting down the crease here uh, and then up on top. That'll take a little squeegee work to make perfect, but I'm not really sure it really has to be that perfect in the grand scheme of things. I mean, nobody sees up here on top of your truck, right? So um, does it really, I mean, again, you'll know what's perfect or not. Also, don't really stress about if this kind of area right here, where there's nothing supporting it, isn't like crease-free. Because as soon as it gets some heat, you could actually use a heat gun or just, you know, out in the hot sun during the summer, uh, this will uh, essentially shrink up a little bit and go become nice and tight. The soap and water or whatever you use to kind of lubricate the vinyl application, it decreases the stickiness, of course. And in this little crease here, it might not really want to stay down well. Um, don't stress as it kind of dries out. Just keep on kind of go touch it now and then, kind of push it back down. And as it kind of dries out, it'll become more and more sticky and you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it there. You'll get it right there. No worries. Just a squeegee to get most of the moisture out, but full stickiness will come probably in 12 to 24 hours. All right, one side is done, easy peasy. Um, I'll go to the other side, and then uh, we'll we'll go visit Seabiscuit again. All right, let's do this one more time. Heading up El Camino 
all the way to visit Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit was uh, like the fastest ho horse in the world for a while. It was in that movie with um, uh, with Spider-Man. Does that make Seabiscuit, does that make him part of the uh, the Marvel universe? Oh, wait a minute. Is Seabiscuit a boy or a girl? I'm gonna make the horse people really mad by not knowing. Um, oh man. Anyway. We're gonna go visit Seabiscuit. I don't expect to get anything from like the surface treat section going up El Camino. We're doing like 35 to 45 miles an hour or stuck in traffic. Uh, so it's definitely, uh, I don't expect anything out of that. But on the highway ride home, that is the goal. That is my expectation. That is my hope. Fingers crossed. Um, we will find out in just a wee bit. All right, here we are again. Look at that, there's Seabiscuit. And I gotta say, from the real-time telemetry data, the real-time efficiency data, I wasn't expecting anything. And um, it's looking really good. I can't wait to get home and analyze this data. But uh, anyway, time to loop it back around and head back on the freeway. A few moments later. Get out of town. Look at that 11% gain in highway range. Uh, <laughs> All right, well, let me back up. We gotta get some context here. and. And my apology, I decided to wear my like my bright safety yellow donut t-shirt today, and boy is it freaking out the webcam. But whatever, let's just let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. And um, to show the context here, I'm gonna have to kind of give away uh, what's going on with the atomic rims that I got a little bit. So um, I think this video is gonna publish before the one on the lightweight rims that I got. Um, so do me a favor, please. Uh, come back, you know, don't, don't just take the results here and, and run with it, right? C come back when that next video hopefully publishes next weekend. Um, I gotta have some time to take the, uh, rooftop tent off and go rerun some zero to 60 benchmarks and stuff, uh, with the atomic rims. Uh, anyway, so if we go ahead and start from the beginning here. So our route to go talk to Seabiscuit, right, goes a little over 30 miles up El Camino, doing stop and go traffic. Uh, all the way from Silicon Valley on up to San Bruno, technically, South San Francisco, uh, and we burn the image power doing that. Then we take the highway back again with cruise control set at 70 miles per hour, locked in the whole way. And I kind of do this in the evening-ish, so uh, traffic isn't a huge issue on the way back. Uh, on the way up, uh, as you can see from the time lapse, if you stare at it hard enough, oh yeah, there's lots of traffic. <laughs> there, there, there's lots of uh, traffic on El Camino, especially around five, six, seven p.m. or so on a work day. Um, so we have the stock trim initially, right? Um, which for what it's worth is not technically 100% stock. We do have the mud flaps, which cause a teeny bit of aerodynamic drag, but whatever. Essentially the stock configuration, right? Then we put on the rooftop tent. Uh, then I added the lightweight atomic rims. And then I went ahead and I blocked up the vents to go ahead and see if we could improve some of the range that we lost. And between the stock and the rooftop tent, as you can see here, right, the change in efficiency for the street segment wasn't really a big deal at all. But from a highway standpoint, it was a huge deal. We're talking about a couple extra kilowatts. We scroll all the way over here to the percentages, right? In the street, we lost 1.1%, big deal. On the highway, we lost 13.5%. That is a huge deal, and it, it kind of, it lights a light bulb off because on our big trip to Texas, when we went out for the eclipse back in April, you know, our efficiency wasn't that great. And I kind of blamed it on cold weather and really high speed limits and that kind of stuff. But realistically, you know, if we lost essentially 13% on the highway from just putting the rooftop tent on, which I never would have guessed it would be that bad, kind of makes sense. It kind of explains things, doesn't it? Um, Anyway, interesting. So when we blocked off the vents, the highway segment was fantastic, right? We went down to 14.7. Uh, so if we scroll on over here to the percentages, we essentially, we, we gained back half a percent, right, on the street. We weren't expecting much and that's kind of confirmed. Um, and, and again, that's adding on to, of course, what we had from the atomic rims. On the highway, right, so uh, we made back some with the atomic wheels and then we made back a bunch more from blocking up the vents. Uh, and so now our miles per kilowatt is almost back to stock trim. It's not quite 100% there, uh, but it's really close. And let's go ahead and scroll over to the right a little more. And this is just math based upon the overall capacity of the battery, which is 142 kilowatts for the Rivian Max Pack, the Rivian R1 Max Pack. On the highway for road trips, where we started out with essentially 349, which is really, really close actually to the EPA rated official range of 355. So um, I'm actually surprised it was that good. 
Throw on the rooftop tent though, and we crash down to 302, adding the lightweight rims, which are more open faced. We do get a little bit back on the highway, but certainly not much. But then closing those vents, we leap back up to 343, right? So essentially between where we were here, right? When we did our road trip to Texas to where we are now, we have an extra 40 miles of range per charge. That's easily an extra half hour of driving. So that is fantastic. That's really, really cool. And then the total mixed range here is basically adding both segments together to get an overall rounded number. And actually, when you do that, we are at 344 now. We are actually, because we improved our range in the street level, um, and I guess we're technically not quite at parity on highway, but when you merge those together, our range now with the rooftop tent, the atomic wheels and the no vents, our range is 344 miles, slightly one mile better than stock. Um, so we've, we've, we've made back what we cost. Um, and I mean, you know, that's, that's still worth it. That's still fantastic. And we have more things to put on the damn truck, right? Uh, I literally just got a set of the uh, rock sliders from uh, Goat Fabrication and um, and a couple other bits and bobs that, that may somewhat impact range even more than just simply adding the weight. Um, so that is the results from closing the vents. I gotta say, it's freaking amazing. Um, if you have a rooftop tent, um, if you have a rooftop tent and you leave it on your R1T, plug up those vents. Now, as far as the next video, the next video in the series will probably be the Atomic Wheels, right? So that's going to be a really fun video. And then the fourth video in this series is going to be looking at the 12-volt system. That's what this is here. This is a uh, Omu uh, lithium-ion battery pack. Uh, the Rivian has problems essentially wasting too much energy trying to recharge the 12-volt battery system. So we're going to do some tricks, both with this and some other ideas as well, to see if we can kind of remove phantom drain even more. Um, we already did that with the battery pack with the cooler. Uh, this will be another step in that direction to make, again, you know, if we're out, like Burning Man is literally going on right now, right? If we were at Burning Man or something like that, and you're stationary for a week, um, losing 1%, 2% of power per day just from the computer system topping off the 12 volt battery system would really suck. So we're going to do some experiments on this and have another video coming up on that in due course. If you want to see all this stuff, of course, please like, please subscribe, stick around. Thanks for watching. Take care.